So tonight's video is going to be hopefully a pretty quick one, although as you know I like to, to drag things out a little bit longer than they probably necessarily have to be. First off, I want to say a huge thank you um, to everyone for commenting on the last one. Um, all the support uh, all my viewers give me, it actually really means a lot. Uh, sincerely, it is really great to see that. Um, you hear horror stories about YouTube comment sections. I think my viewers are absolute best, knowledgeable, into this stuff, and uh, fantastic. So thank you, everyone. Uh, it's an extra boost of motivation to uh, to put out a little bit of extra content. So thank you. And on to what we're here for. Uh, RT11, 5.3, uh, emulated. Sim H. Uh, of course, we're we're on a smart machine, smart OS smart machine here. Uh, just because, what better way to virtualize is there? So we're in a zone here. Let's edit uh, some config and uh, get RT11 fired up. It's going to be the basic installation, and I think we may use this as a springboard to do some other things with RT11. So let's uh, head over there. So we'll take a look at the uh, the config here. We're giving it an 1183, a kind of a later machine, um, and more memory than I think we can even use. So RT11 is a single user uh, real-time operating system for the PDP-11. Really kind of one of the more basic operating systems you can use. And it was in use for a long time. So from the 70s through the 90s, there were supported versions of it. Uh, the version 5.3 we're going to be using here is actually licensed to be used for, you know, I guess personal use in SimH. Uh, so we have a couple of RLO2s, um, and we're going to start out with, we have the distribution disk. It's going to have us make a backup here, and we're going to set the bad blocks on so it'll create that new disk correctly when we attach it. Uh, we're doing 8-bit input and output, and like I said, we have a half meg of memory. Um probably not necessary. So that is the config. Fire it up. We do want to overwrite our last track and we'll boot from RL0. Look at that, fantastic. So. Uh, some nice larger fonts there. I wish I had a real VT terminal. I mean, one of the things I have, I have a Weiss 60, WY60 for a serial terminal. It's in pretty rough shape, but I wish I had like a VT, you know, 320 or 420. A nice deck serial terminal and some MMJ cables. But uh, unfortunately, those things actually still go for a pretty penny because they are, man, well, they're, they're great terminals. So we're going to use the automated installation here, and um, it's going to ask us to create a backup after we set our date. So we're, I guess we're the 20th of January. Not y So this version is not Y2K compliant. Apparently there's some patches out there that'll fix that. And also later versions, so 5.7 of RT11 is Y2K compliant. So we'll just say we're 89 here. And so we're going to have to pop out of here back to the the emulator and put in uh, RL1, our disk. So we have that already attached, uh, the distribution backup. We'll continue here. Now we got to remove this, and we're going to create our working disk. I'll detach RL1. So we got our. We're going to mount this. I'd love the the labeling. They tell you how to label your your disks. So we are now up and running here. 
on our new system. Uh, so we'll, let's break out here and we'll quit this. So we now have our RT11 system. And go ahead at this. We'll change this. So make this our primary. And we'll get rid of the backup. It is nice that they guide you through creating a backup. Because back when you had magnetic media, say you got this on floppy or these are disk packs, but you did get it on floppy. You could get it on, you know, I guess 300, 500K floppies, 8 inch floppies, um, variety of distribution methods. And if you didn't make that first backup, you could really screw up your, your installation media. We also want to put some languages on here uh, Basic and Fortran. So we'll get those as well. I don't need the bad blocks uh, statement. And we could add all sorts of other cool devices, put some tapes, uh, tape streamers on here, you know, cassettes, uh, other type of disk units. We could put the RX-02, RX-50, those are a couple different types of floppy drives, uh, serial lines. So here we got RX-02, RX-50. Uh, one thing to note here is that we are the RT-11 FB. Uh, so RT-11 had a few different monitors, I guess, you know, Let's call it kernels for lack of a better term. And this one just did foreground background. So you could run a task foreground, one in background. And it didn't support much memory. If we do a show memory, we don't have a lot of available memory. So we can put the different monitors in place. So we have a few here. What we want is the extended memory. And read the docs. I am kind of a, a newbie to RT11. Uh, and you'll see from the thumbnail, I picked up a little pocket guide to RT11, and that's been a huge help, as has BitSavers. Uh, BitSavers is a great uh, like a site, for lack of a better term. All sorts of documentation and software uh, is being preserved there. It's really important stuff. We're going to Put this, so we're going to put this into our, I guess, our boot block, for lack of a better term. Now, this is pretty cool. We can bootstrap from a running system into a new running system. And now we are the extended memory system. So if we do a... So now we have some extra memory here. We got our extra memory there. So pretty cool. Um, we have our extended memory and then of course our low memory. Let's take a look at what's on that language disk. So we've got basic and Fortran and let's bring those up. Let's uh, take a look at what the documentation says. So a lot of the commands here are going to feel similar to VMS and uh, by extension, things like DOS, right? So this is kind of earlier on in the evolutionary history of DEC operating systems than something like VMS. And it feels similar in some ways. Obviously, this is very, very basic. But if you know a little VMS, it will help. Okay. Okay. It's not terribly helpful, but we'll just copy this all onto the main disk. So we've got Fortran and Basic. Uh, I, the one thing I found in RT11 that's a little goofy is the editor, and this is one of the reasons that I really want a proper uh, DEC terminal, a VT series terminal, is you have some keys that I probably could map them in something like Xterm or uh, the XFC, you know, some modern terminal software. But it has a set of keys, things like the gold key, you know, PF1, PF2, um, that were kind of over on the right-hand side of the keyboard. I think, yeah, I think it was shared with the numeric keypad. 
or in place of it. And so the editors in here uh, depend on that. But nothing to say we can't interact with this through copy and paste. Um, so we have Fortran. I'm not going to write a program in Fortran right now, but we'll do Hello World in Basic just in interest of time. Hoping to keep this brief. I've already yammered on long enough. So let's see if Basic works. Okay, of course we want all functions. The, the classic Commodore 64 uh, basic program. And again, this is like 70s or early 80s basics. So there's our there's our program. Let's save this. Okay. Run it. Fantastic. So we got basic. And we can control C to exit that. And buy gets us out. Um, And we got our hello. Let me see if I can get that back in. Fantastic. So we can save and load basic programs. Um, what is RT11 good for these days? Well, one, what I'm going to use it for is to do a little bit of PDP11 assembler. And there'll be some videos on that, hopefully, uh, taking a look at how to do some assembly language on the PDP-11, which is one of those great systems for doing assembly. Uh, the instruction set makes sense. And if I were to list the systems you'd probably want to do assembly on, you're going to have the 6502, uh, you know, Commodore 64, Apple's, whole bunch of stuff. It makes sense. The 68000 and the PDP-11. And it's sort of by extension the VAX as well, although it's getting a little bit more complicated at that point. And I forgot the PDP-8, which is also super cool, and you can do assembly language really easily. One of the problems is you, because it has actually a lack of instructions, it, the instruction set is really limited on the PDP-8, you have to take some weird detours uh, to get some useful stuff done sometimes. But already built in, we have the macro assembler. So... We should be good to go for that. So, again, as always, thanks for watching. And, again, a huge thank you for all the support uh, and lovely comments on the previous video. So that's RT11 up and running. And future ones, we'll look at doing some assembler programming on for the PDP-11 on RT11. Um, oh, well, I was completely forgot. Why I was saying what you might use RT11 for these days is if you have a tiny PDP, right? So not a big one, like here we're doing an 1183. Uh, I think it's still a micro. I think that's still a Q-Bus system. The, the threes were, were the Q-Bus. But if you had something like an 1123, 23 plus, or a 53, with not much memory, you only had 128K or 256K. RT11 will fit nicely in there. Whereas some of the more advanced and multi-user operating systems, you may have a little bit of trouble fitting them. So... That is one of the good uses for RT11 today, and a little old and crusty, but kind of fun. So, again, thanks for watching.